Hi, I'm Howard Manella, Managing Principal of Alternative Resiliency Services. Let's talk about adaptive business continuity. There's been a lot of attention lately on this topic. This is an effort to move the practice forward and streamline and evolve it, much like the streamlining and evolution of software development from legacy waterfall to agile. Adaptive business continuity contains a number of tenants. Some of them are controversial, such as streamlining or even eliminating previously mandatory steps. Some are innovations, such as new ways of looking at things like capabilities. And some have been good practice for some time, but reinforced and pulled together, such as training and planning based on mnemonics for easier memory. Taken together, this set of tenants presents an opportunity to streamline speed to value, risk reduction, and provide for better execution. Along with this change, however, we also have to think about how we communicate the value of business continuity and resiliency to our executives. This has been problematic in our practice for some time because we're viewed upon as a necessary evil or a cost center or just another shared service. Getting executive buy-in is critical for success. So how do we do that? Well, we as practitioners have to be adaptive, if you will, and change how we interface with the C-suite. So let's talk about some of these things and unpack a couple of ways that we could do that. And please note that these concepts also um, pertain to how we interface with executives regarding cyber, disaster recovery, crisis management, and other similar shared services. So I want you to look at something let me bring up something on the screen and we'll take a look. So let's think about vocabulary, values, and viewpoint. Let's talk about viewpoint first. Executives have a different viewpoint than people on the line, individual contributors, or people at the management level. Let's take a look at uh, D. Eagle's way of breaking this down, kind of like Maslow's hierarchy. Line people are very focused on job security, job conditions, and their quality of life. Mid-level managers, the people running the teams, are focused on different things. Stability, authority, resources. They're kind of at the 10,000-foot level. The C-suite is way up on the 50,000-foot level. They're thinking about ROI, they're thinking about externalities, and they're thinking about the strategic vision. We as practitioners should be discussing resiliency, continuity in those terms and relate it to ROI, externalities, and the strategic vision in order to get their attention and align our viewpoints with theirs. Let's talk about values. Executive values are different. We as practitioners in the disaster business, we're disaster geeks, face it. We have to think all day about tsunami, about earthquakes, about any terror, acts of nature, acts of man, all the risks, right? But executives are not thinking along those lines. And if we think that we can communicate our value through fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you'll watch their eyes glaze over. You've seen it a million times. Executives are not worried about ISIS. They're not worried about that active shooter. However, they are worried about these people. They're worried about attorneys and they're worried about stockholders. So, some magic words to use when you're talking to your executives in the C-suite. Any executive, especially those that have a legal background, will absolutely understand what affirmative defense and standard of due care mean. Affirmative defense is the ability to walk into court during the class action lawsuit following the business outage and say, Your Honor, we had a business continuity program, we did all the right things, we had everything in place, and it unfortunately did not work as well as it could have. A very different story, right, than going into court for the class action lawsuit and saying, Your Honor, we thought it would never happen, and besides, we thought everybody could work from home. Affirmative defense, standard of due care. Now think about it. Stockholders and the board are relying on the executives for proper stewardship of the company. They need to see good governance, 
good corporate hygiene, and they want to see the executives demonstrate a standard of due care. And if they're not, they'll get some new ones. So if you can talk about your program as providing that standard of due care, then you'll get their attention because you'll be talking about their values and views. And finally, vocabulary. Think about how we communicate as practitioners. We use a lot of jargon, a lot of acronyms. We're a very technical practice, so we tend to communicate in technical terms. Now here are some of them. These are our terms. These are not the executive terms. They communicate in English and they communicate in business. Guaranteed the way to make an executive's eyes glaze over is to go and talk about how we need to do a BIA to align the RPOs to the RTO so we can map the sub-application uh, processes to the, optimize the MCO. No, don't do that. Talk business, talk value. Think about how they will want to be communicated with. It's your responsibility to learn their lingo, not your responsibility to teach them yours. I had an interview once with David Linsett of Adaptive, and we talked about stealing the magazines. By that, I meant go up to the executive suite, look on the coffee table, and look at what they're reading, take that home and read it. That's what interests them. That's written in vocabulary that they can communicate with, learn that vocabulary. So that's the story. Values, viewpoint, and vocabulary. If we learn as practitioners to adapt our way of communicating with our executives, then they will be calling you instead of you trying to bang on their doors. So thank you very much. Hopefully this is giving you some ideas. I'm Howard Manella, Managing Director of Alternative Resiliency. Now go forth and be adaptive.